If you've been looking into upgrading your system or building a new system for Resolve, this is the best video in the world for you. We went out to Seattle to talk to the guys at Puget Systems. They make amazing workstation PCs designed for DaVinci Resolve. They gave us a tour and showed us their production facility and how they benchmark all their systems and test things. And I mean, it was just phenomenal. And I sat down with their Resolve guy, Matt, and asked him every question I can think to ask when it comes to building a PC for Resolve. This is solid gold hardware wisdom. We'll have chapter markers down below, but I really recommend just sitting back and watching the whole conversation because I learned so much. Let's go. Well, hey everybody, here we are at Puget Systems and uh, I have Matt here who is the expert on how to make a computer that's amazing for DaVinci Resolve. We always reference their, their benchmarks and the information that they have available to build workstations for our company. And I know, you guys have been asking, how do I build a system for XYZ in DaVinci Resolve? Well, we came up here and we're gonna we're gonna pin you down and we're gonna ask you those questions and make sure that we get some answers. All right. This is investigative journalism at its finest, or at least what I can do. So I'm gonna start this off with um, what is a computer? I, I don't know how to answer that. That's gonna be a problem. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> No, I mean, to take it to its basic, a computer's just a tool. I think that's one of the things that sometimes people get a little too caught up. You know, people have a sometimes a little bit of a tribal mentality and it's, sure. you know, Apple versus PC or Intel versus AMD. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's a tool. It's, yeah. like, it's like your camera. It's, it's like your keyboard. It's a tool to get your job done and the right fit for your job is is different every yeah. time. So we have some, some parts here. We got the dad board. We have the RAM, RAM slot over here. <laughs> Um, we have the motherboard here, and the motherboard and the dad board go together. That's the birds and the bees. Close. And then this is the tower. Yeah, this is pretty much the entire computer now. Yep. And then the motherboard, CPU, RAM, and uh, storage now. Storage is getting becoming about the size of a stick of gum uh, these days, which My is... My goodness, that's crazy. I think one of the biggest questions I get is what kind of system should I build for my needs? And so when you're talking about DaVinci Resolve, what do you look for in a in a PC? Yeah, so it depends a lot on where your priorities lie. Um, and Resolve is a little bit different because, you know, something like the Adobe suite, it's very, you know, Premiere Pro does this kind of stuff, After Effects does this kind of stuff, and they use hardware differently, but they're different applications. Sure. Resolve it's all kind of merged into one. You've got color grading, you've got fusion, you've got uh, Fairlight now, you've got uh, the like noise reduction and the open effects. Uh, so all of those different things use hardware actually slightly differently. Oh. And so you really want to look at, you know, do you do a lot of fusion? Uh, do you work with a lot of HEVC footage that needs a uh, hardware decoding? Uh, do you do really heavy color grading? Um, and each one of those different things are going to use things uh, differently. So for example, uh, someone who shoots a lot of like 4K HEVC, they're really gonna want hardware decoding support. Uh, so that's gonna be something like an Intel Core CPU with an iGPU. You really need the iGPU to get uh, what Intel calls QuickSync, which then can be used for hardware decoding. Uh, something like Fusion, it uses uh, CPU power pr primarily and single core or lightly threaded. So big giant, you know, those new 96 core CPUs, don't really do anything for Fusion. Wow. Uh, you want something with like 16, 20 cores, uh, and even that's more than you really need, but that's kind of the sweet spot right now for the fastest per core performance. Uh, and at the same time, if you do a lot of open effects, noise reduction, that's where you want big beefy GPUs, even multiple GPUs. You know, it's kind of what Resolve is kind of known for in the industry is, yeah, throw three GPUs at it and yeah. it can crunch through it, but really only for that part of Resolve. Like Fusion, that's actually can give you a slight performance decrease. So. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Okay, so um, let's let's think of like three uh, different kinds of, of people, because I, I feel like our, our audience is kind of, kind of in three different categories, right? So um, first of all, let's just go with like a kind of a casual content creator. Yeah. You know, somebody that might be shooting on like their, you know, little like Panasonic or their Sony mirrorless or, you know, uh, their DSLR, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If somebody's just wants to edit video, you know, they're not a visual effects artist. They're not, a, you know, a studio colorist or something like that. They're just making videos. Uh, what do they want to look for in a system? 
for that kind of a person, you probably want to prioritize a couple of things. I mean, on, on no matter who the person is, there, there is a couple of things that you want to look at first. Um, and honestly, probably should take a step back to those. The first is actually storage. I mean, before you get into anything, you know, if you run out of hard drive space, you're kind of, you know, you can't really do much of anything. So sure. do make sure you prioritize that your storage is big enough and fast enough, which these days isn't usually much of an issue, it being fast enough. I mean, I typically think of, you know, get an, get an SSD. Does it matter what kind of SSD you get? Yeah, so there's multiple kinds of SSDs now. Uh, generally, people call them either SSD, and when they're talking about that, they're talking about two and a half inch drives that are about yay big. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Been around forever. Those things are terrific. Uh, and get quite large these days. You can get eight, 12, 16 terabyte drives. Uh, and then you have these newer NVMe drives. Mm, and okay. these NVMe drives are smaller, they go directly Directly under the motherboard, and they are incredibly fast. Uh, they do seven gigs a second uh, read and write, Shoot. way more than really anyone needs. Yeah. Um, but they are terrific for a lot of different things. They are great as like an OS drive because uh, they are not that much more expensive when you're talking about like one terabyte yeah, or pretty smaller. Pretty affordable. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's not that much money for them. Um, but if you have that as your OS drive, Windows will launch faster. Resolve will start up faster. You know, everything just is a little bit a little bit faster. And for a small cost, you might as well. Yeah. Uh, but if you need big bulk storage, you know, you're shooting raw, uh, like 4K raw, yeah, you typically go still those normal SSDs because you can get more for your dollar mm -hmm. and they are fast enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, once you're talking, you know, 8K red, you know, that kind of stuff, yeah, you might still need to go like giant arrays of NVMEs uh, because you need that speed. Mm -hmm. But NVMe drives typically are overkill for a lot of those kind of workflows. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then probably just name brand kind of stuff. Don't get bills SSD, you know? <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of uh, more affordable SSDs out there. Um, especially for prof professional um, kind of systems. You know, this this computer is a tool for you to get paid. Mm -hmm. um, you really don't want to skimp too much on that. So yeah. there are some big names out there. Samsung tends to be uh, one of the most, most robust. Uh, Kingston makes some great drives. There's a number of others. Uh, but yeah, there are great drives out there. Just maybe don't go buy some drives from AliExpress or something like that. Yeah. Like stick, stick to you know, Newegg, Amazon. A lot, know, lot of 40 SSDs and they all have Eight terabytes, do they though? Mm. Come on, <laughs> come on. Uh, second thing is actually RAM. Um, so a lot of people, you know, you want to skip right to the CPU, the GPU. Mm. Those are kind of the fun topics where you get all the yeah, benchmarks yeah. and the numbers. Uh, but really RAM, kind of similar to storage. If you don't have enough, it's, it's going to be problems. You really can't get it around that at all. Uh, so for that kind of a person, just shooting you know, off their DSLR, you're shooting you know, H.264 or HEVC, uh, usually like 32 gigs of RAM, 64, uh, depends on if you want to do like HD or, or UHD, um, 32 to 64 gigs of RAM is what I would start at. Make sure you have that, because if you're under that, it's just, it doesn't matter how fast your CPU is. Oh, okay. Now, would that be would that be true for like a Mac as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Mac, it's a little bit different in terms of like the total, um, especially with the, their new, you know, the, the M1s, the M2s, M3s. Um, but still, I think generalities kind of, you know, lie in there. Um, 16 gigs is probably bare minimum on Apple. 32 is really where you'd want to start and then go up to 64, or I think they allow like 96 and 128. Gotcha. Yeah. So if somebody has, uh, you know, let's say like a gaming PC or something, and they they only have eight or 16 gigs of RAM, that's probably a good place to start is up in that RAM. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's and that's honestly, Luckily, that's one of the easiest upgrades you can do in a system. Um, you need to double check that it's the right speeds, you know, that it's compatible with everything, but then you just you know get more RAM and it just slots right into these, these slots. You just toss it in, do a couple of quick tests, make sure it's not broken, mm. um, and then you're good to go. Yeah, okay, so make sure you have enough storage. That's the thing, it's funny, I get a lot of people saying, uh, how do I make my videos take up less space and everything. And I just always tell them like, you can't. Like, I mean, you, you can do some stuff, but you just gotta have space. That's just the reality of it. You know, I mean, terabytes of space. Like you shouldn't be, you know, have a 320 gig hard drive that you're kind of trying to shuffle things off and on. It's just not gonna work. And storage is cheap nowadays, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I mean, especially compared to all the stuff we're probably going to be talking about, but like starting with that, man, get storage. You guys, like, it's not that hard. And then RAM. Okay, so storage and RAM, assuming we have that yeah. good, 
what's next? Okay, so for that person, you know, shooting off camera, uh, HVC H264, uh, the biggest thing I would prioritize is that you're using an Intel Core uh, CPU with an iGPU. Uh, they have some models that are slightly cheaper and they don't have integrated graphics. And you might think, oh, well, if I have a video card, why would I need integrated graphics? Mm. Uh, but it gives you a technology that Intel calls uh, QuickSync, okay. uh, which is used for hardware decoding and encoding of H.264 and a whole lot of the different flavors of HEVC, you know, different chroma subsamplings, different bit rates. Um, Intel Core CPUs with QuickSync will decode pretty much all of those in, in uh, DaVinci Resolve. And so by using Intel Core, anything you throw at it that's HEVC is going to be able to be hardware decoded. Um, and that's way faster than brute forcing it with software decoding. Wow, I don't know if I have I don't think my system has that. I might even have an AMD. I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I got to double check that. And, and there are like oftentimes it's totally fine. Uh, like AMD Ryzen, they're terrific also because uh, a lot of those versions of HEVC can be decoded with the GPU. Okay. Um, so you can be using a GPU instead. The big thing with QuickSync is that it does more. So if you get some footage from a client or uh, you know someone else, and it's a different format than you usually work with. Mm it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna be able to use hardware decoding for it. You're not gonna to have to deal with, oh shoot, this is something weird, I gotta do a transcode or proxies mm -hmm. when I don't normally need to use that. It'll just work out of the box. Um, so that's the biggest reason because other than that, Intel and AMD are pretty close to on par for DaVinci Resolve. So okay. all things being equal, again, like if you don't have a, you know, a, a team loyalty to Team Red or Team Blue, uh, Intel is usually the way to go just because you get that extra capability if you need it. Sure, okay. Yeah, so it's just a safer option. Yeah, really. yeah it, it just covers more of the bases. Okay, all right. And now does that, does it matter whether you use Studio or free version? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And you know, honestly, Studio is probably the first investment you should make even before hardware. Uh, that's what usually what I tell people. It's three hundred bucks. I believe it's a lifetime, basically thing. I, I some of the licenses so far, yeah. yeah. Some of the licenses we use are still for Resolve fourteen, I think, yeah, and yeah. we're on eighteen point six now. Um, so yeah, because Studio gets you hardware decoding support, so it doesn't matter if you have a. Intel CPU with QuickSync if you don't have Studio. Mm. Um, opens up a whole bunch of the, uh, you know, the OpenFX things, a lot of the new AI stuff. Uh, yeah. So it really does it's a pretty help solid a deal. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So if, if you're if you're looking at upgrading your hardware, make sure you upgrade Resolve to Studio first because some of the hardware you can't even use if you don't have Studio, right? Is that, exactly. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I always tell people too is beyond just Studio, do take a look at your workflow first. Um, mm. A lot of people think that throwing money at a problem is going to solve it, uh, but sometimes it's actually their workflow is a little unusual and they don't even realize it because that's just the way they've always done so it. So give me an example of that. Uh, they might be shooting with a camera and they're shooting in H.264 422. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a format that does not have any hardware decoding support off of any hardware in existence. Oh. Um, and maybe they were shooting that because they're like, hey, my camera does both. Hey, I might as well use the higher quality one. It'll give me better, Makes sense. better picture. Yeah. Uh, but if they don't need it, well, going down to 420, now they get hardware decoding support. Maybe they don't even need a new system. Oh. Um, or at the same time, if their camera also supports HEVC and they just haven't decided to move over to HEVC, Switching over to HEVC, they could now have hardware decoding support. Again, maybe they don't even need a new system. Um, oftentimes, uh, you're just working proxies into your workflow. Mm -hmm. Could be enough. Um, it, it's just, yeah, take a look at what you're doing first and see, is this optimal? You know, yeah. Is this really the right way to do this? Yeah. I mean, it, I've definitely seen people, you know, they'll shoot something like 6K raw and mm -hmm. they'll just, They'll just edit with that and you know in a full 6k timeline the whole time and then they're delivering to 1080 at the end and it's like why are you doing that yeah. you know it's just doesn't doesn't make any sense but it feels like you are doing the highest quality thing mm -hmm. really you might be shooting yourself in the foot and that's that's too bad yeah okay so make sure your workflow is good make sure you have studio make sure you have plenty of storage plenty of ram and then uh an Intel processor with quick sync uh, yes. capabilities, yeah. right? Yeah, which yeah. you'll usually see it as it has integrated GPU. Uh, oftentimes the quick sync part is kind of a hidden oh, okay. feature. So integrated GPU. Integrated graphics and make sure when you have it in your system, especially if you're DIY and you're building yourself, oftentimes motherboards will disable the integrated graphics when you have a discrete GPU. So you have to make sure you go into the BIOS and say, no, no, I do want that on. Because otherwise it won't work. Yeah, something else we should check on our system. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, what's after that? 
Uh, so after that is really just the, the GPU. Um, now for someone who is just shooting, you know, HPC, H.264, not doing a ton of you know, noise reduction, open effects, anything like that, you really don't need a ton. Uh, usually the rule of thumb is get the latest generation if you can, uh, just because there is generational improvements. Uh, sometimes you get great sales on like one generation old hardware, great, go for it. Um, but usually aim for the latest generation. And then the biggest thing at that level or of that kind of a, a, a user is make sure you have enough video memory. Uh, so that each GPU basically has its own RAM on it. And uh, the nice thing is these days, eight gigs is kind of the minimum that you're gonna be getting most GPUs, and that's plenty for up to about 4K. Uh, okay. So if you're shooting 4K timelines, eight gig GPU, you're fine. Um, so really you don't have to worry too much beyond that uh, for this kind of a person, again, because you're not using anything in Resolve that's really GPU accelerated uh, gotcha. in those situations usually. So if somebody's just doing basic editing and they're not doing a lot of noise reduction or a magic mask or super scaling or, or any of that kind of like intense AI stuff, putting a ton of money into their graphics card isn't really gonna like be yeah. amazing for them, right? Exactly, no. So for that kind of a person, you're probably better off spending a little bit more money on a higher end CPU, getting a, a Core i7 or Core i9, and then the GPU keeping at like a RTX 4060 level or a 4070. Sure. Um, now that's, you know, of course, just for Resolve. If you're doing other stuff, you know, if you also want to use your system for gaming or yeah. something, yeah, of course, change it. Uh, but for that exact workload, really not much need for anything above a, a mid, low end kind of GPU. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause like, I mean, you don't, you don't hear this stuff a lot just like with a quick scan on a forum mm -hmm. or something. You know, everybody just says like, get the craziest GPU you can get. And then people are spending $1,700 on a GPU, you know, when it's like they don't even have that great of a processor or, you know, they're, they're shooting in, in some format that's not ideal anyway. And some of it is also to always keep in mind where you are getting your uh, recommendations from. You know, a lot of people on the internet who are gonna be talking about this kind of stuff, talking about performance in different applications, they are primarily tech enthusiasts. Mm. They like numbers, they like technology, they like, you know, how much faster is this new stuff than the old stuff. And in applications like DaVinci Resolve, they're gonna be a little focused on like GPU performance because that's where Resolve excels. But sometimes you lose that nuance of where is DaVinci Resolve using that GPU that heavily? Because again, just working with A64, HVC, or ProRes, that's not really using the GPU at all. So you really don't need it. Wow, yeah. So save, save some money. If you're just doing some, some basic edits, you know, you're not getting crazy. You don't need the craziest uh, GPU in the world to, uh, to have good performance just doing your edits. Yeah, and the other thing with GPU too uh, that we should probably touch on is um, NVIDIA is not the only option out there. Uh, we actually now have three different options. Uh, we got NVIDIA, we have AMD, and Intel has been getting back into the GPU market. Uh, and across those three, NVIDIA is typically our go-to recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to have a little bit more stable drivers. Uh, they tend to have a little bit better support for some of the newer features in, in DaVinci Resolve, especially the newer AI stuff. Um, and it, like performance wise, AMD definitely can keep up. There are some areas where they actually are faster, but generally for most people, we say Nvidia is kind of the the, the safer option. Yeah. Um, and then Intel is making some really interesting stuff, especially if you're on a tight budget. Uh, Intel can be very attractive, but their GPUs are first generation. And yeah. anything that's first generation, I tend to be a little bit hesitant of. Um, sure. If you love tech and you love messing around with stuff, go for it. Uh, but if you just want your system to sit under your desk and just churn along and you don't have to think about it, uh, NVIDIA is probably the way that we would recommend going. Yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of the recommendations for just a content creator, somebody who's doing edits, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else they should keep in mind if, if they just want a box that will help them make videos quickly? The big thing I would say is just make sure you're not skimping on quality. Um, there are other parts of the system that we're not really talking about here, power supply, even like chassis and CPU cooling. Um, those things you don't want to just go super cheap on. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get very, very inexpensive power supplies, but that's feeding the power to everything else. Yeah. And that's gonna become a problem if you know that starts giving bad voltages or mm -hmm. you know anything to anywhere else. So really spend that extra little cost you know, at, at every level, on every component, to make sure you're getting quality stuff. You know, name name brand, good quality, uh, reliable. Uh, because, and even if you could save all that budget and then get like a higher tier CPU, 
if that system starts blue screening or giving you weird crashes, yeah. it's not worth it. You've lost all of that performance Absolutely. out of like one blue screen a month. Uh, yeah. So go reliable first, performance second. Yeah, don't don't buy um, Jeff's super powerful discount PC parts warehouse. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, exactly. So focus on quality. If you want it to last, if you want it to be reliable, you know, spend a little bit extra and get the name brand parts. That's, that's, I think, really solid advice. Okay, so that is the content creator. Mm -hmm. Now, what if somebody is into short films and they're less about putting out a bunch of videos, you know, with their DSLR and they're more shooting like cinema camera stuff? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're using RED or Blackmagic RAW or kind of the higher end stuff. Um, what would you, would it, would it be any different? So the biggest difference there, um, one, of course, you're gonna need more storage. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need a little, probably a little bit more RAM. Uh, CPU, you can actually get away with the same CPUs uh, for quite a ways, actually, up until you get up to maybe like 6K, like you're shooting 6K and above, you might need to start looking at other stuff. Uh, but like those Intel Core CPUs are terrific uh, all the way up to about 6K. Um, the big difference is you do have to invest more in the GPU at that point. Okay. Uh, because RED, Blackmagic RAW, uh, you know, a lot of those other RAW formats are GPU accelerated. Mm. And so like your CPU is doing parts of it, but your GPU is also doing you know, a good chunk of it's doing the debayering process. And so that's where you really get up to, you want something like an RTX 4080, uh, possibly even a 4090, uh, because, you know, the more GPU power you're able to throw at it, mm. the better it is at processing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there are, of course, points where, you know, more GPU doesn't get you any faster, like live playback performance, but it can still help smooth out the scrubbing. It can make the exports faster. If you do need to work with proxies, or optimized media, it'll be faster for processing that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so generally, it's a similar system as like that normal content creator, beef up the GPU, and then once you get up to like an RTX 4090 level GPU, that's when you need to go back to the CPU and probably upgrade to something like uh, AMD's Threadripper Pro uh, line or Threadripper. Right. Yeah. But if you're not doing, you know, 6K, 8K raw, you know, debayering a bunch of stuff, you don't really need to go super crazy on the, the graphics card unless you're doing the um, the AI stuff, right? Yeah, AI stuff, noise reduction tends to come up a little bit more in those kind of workflows, uh, some of the other open effects. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's just taking the GPU, I would say, and bumping it up like one or two notches um, is kind of the difference here. You just need that GPU a little bit higher. Uh, again, RAM, maybe you go up one notch. You just kind of turn everything up you know, just a little bit, uh, but you can kind of stick with the si similar CPU until you get into those really high-end workflows. Okay, all right. And so you, you were talking about like the Intel Core. So those are kind of like the more affordable Intel. Yeah, those are, right? th there's a lot of overlap these days. We used to call it like client and workstation, mm -hmm. but man, I mean, we use Intel Core in I think something like 60% of our DaVinci Resolve systems. Mm -hmm. And like those are workstations. So yeah. like calling it client versus workstation doesn't really work anymore. Sure. Uh, but yeah, those are their, um, I guess you'd call it like consumer, more more focused uh, CPUs. There are a lot more of the marketing is around gaming and home use. Yeah. Uh, but man, they do terrific for this. And same thing with AMD. They have their Ryzen line and then they have their Threadripper and Threadripper Pro. Same thing, AMD Ryzen line is kind of geared more towards enthusiasts and you know clients and that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. does great for this kind of workloads. All right. So at what point would you consider like, all right, let's go up to a Threadripper, which is a, a, a huge price difference, yeah, right? big, yeah. Uh, I would say that's usually around 6K raw, um, especially like 8K. If you're getting up to, into 8K workflows or what does Blackmagic do now, like 12K? 12K. And, okay. Yeah, if you're getting up into that stuff, that's when I would definitely make that jump up to uh, Threadripper. Uh, the big thing there is make sure you jump all the way up to the 32 core. Uh, they do have a 24 core and some specialty models that are even lower core counts. But those CPUs tend to be about the same performance as like an Intel Core. So at that point, you're spending more money, getting very similar performance, you're not really getting anything out of it. Wow. So you have to, there's like a gap between you're, yeah. you're doing like Intel Core, AMD Ryzen, then there's a big gap in terms of performance for your dollar, and then you start getting benefits again. Yeah, okay. So you do like the, the higher end consumer line or you just absolutely go crazy. Yeah, pretty much. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah you basically have to skip. <laughs> if that's not good enough, you gotta just lose your mind. Like that's, yeah. that's because if you don't, you're spending money to upgrade, but it's nominal. Yeah, it's it's not really getting you anything, and in some cases, it'll actually end up giving you worse performance. See, that's enraging. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's frustrating. Okay, well that's that's great. Anything else to think about if you're, you know, doing doing short films or cinematics or things you'd be shooting the higher res raw stuff for? Sure. Um, so the other things that tend to come up with our customers uh, isn't about performance, actually. It's about platform capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people have been um, moving over from, you know, direct attached storage, you know, Thunderbolt or USB uh, storage, and they're starting to use uh, network attached storage. Mm -hmm. And if you're moving that way, you really want to make sure that your system has like 10G networking. Um, at the same time, you got to make sure your whole network is capable of that. But so looking at does this system support 10G networking is a big deal, uh, I'd say these days. Uh, similarly, Thunderbolt, a lot of people still have tons of Thunderbolt drives. And so Thunderbolt capability is a much bigger deal, I'd say here. Is that just a matter of getting the right like PCI card or is there some other things we need to think about? So some of it you can uh, do with PCIe cards. Uh, networking is very easy to drop in a card you're good to go. A Thunderbolt is a lot more complicated. Uh, you have to have multiple things that are working together to get Thunderbolt to work. Because um, under unlike just straight USB, you know, it has to support display. It's got to support you know data and daisy yeah. chain, um, and that's very complicated. And especially on PCs, um, there's a lot of different brands you might be working with. Yeah. And so if your motherboard is one brand and you get like a Thunderbolt card, it has to be the same brand. But even then, like the firmwares have to match up. Uh, so typically for us, we prioritize motherboards that have Thunderbolt built in. It's not an add-on card, it's just built in. Gotcha. Um, and that tends to be the most reliable way of handling Thunderbolt. Um, now, unfortunately, that means you have to think about that from the get-go mm -hmm. of, I want Thunderbolt now because changing your motherboard is not super easy. Not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not ideal. Okay. Now, I'm super into Fusion, right? I love making really complicated stuff. And as we know, Fusion uh, is a resource hog. So if I were going to build the best computer ever to just destroy things with Fusion, how do I do it? Good news is it's not going to be crazy, crazy expensive. Oh, okay. Uh, bad news is that's because Fusion can't take advantage of some of the more expensive, more uh, robust hardware that's out there. Okay. Uh, so Fusion is very interesting. I mean, because Blackmagic bought Fusion, what, eight, eight years ago or something like that, and they've been, you know, sticking it into Resolve. Uh, but because it was a different application from the get go, it uses hardware very differently than a lot of the rest of Resolve. Um, big key points is one, uh, it doesn't use GPU a crazy, crazy amount. Um, there are certainly GPU accelerated parts, but typically GPU is not the bottleneck. Uh, mm -hmm. So you want a good GPU, but it doesn't need to be crazy. Uh, multi GPU actually doesn't really work well in Fusion. Uh, in a lot of our testing, if you add more GPUs, it actually lowers performance in Fusion. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, so it's one of those trade offs where, like, if you do a bunch of noise reduction and Fusion, you're kind of getting performance here, but you're losing, usually it's not a lot, it's a few percent, but you know, it's not really helping you in Fusion. Oh. Uh, so, that's a big thing. Uh, you don't need to go crazy on the GPU, mid range GPU, you'll be fine. Uh, CPU also, uh, it is not super highly threaded. Mm -hmm. So, those new AMD CPUs that have 64, 96 cores, no, they're gonna be slower than this you know, Intel Core CPU that has 24 cores. Um, so Intel Core right now tends to be the fastest performance you can get. So you get like an Intel Core i9 14900K, it's like a six, five, $600 CPU, that's about the fastest you can get right now. Wow. Which is a little unfortunate that you can't yeah. just like throw money at the problem yeah. and, and get more performance. Man, that would be great. Yeah, that, yeah, sometimes that would be great if you can solve your problems with money, but not in Fusion. Boy. Okay. And what about RAM? Yeah, so RAM is the other area where you kind of can throw money at the problem. Okay. Because uh, uh, similar to other applications, you'll like After Effects. Um, you know, you're caching all those frames into RAM. And so the more RAM you have, the more frames you can cache. And if a frame is already cached and you're just playing again and again, you're just like checking out how something looks, you don't have to re-render those mm -hmm. frames. Mm -hmm. um, so having plenty of RAM just means it's the chance that you might not have to reprocess a frame at the, at the get-go, which means that, you know, you know, you don't even have to have a super fast CPU if you're not having to recache. Yeah. So uh, just get plenty of, plenty of RAM, I, I'd say, Minimum 64 gigs, um, ideal probably like 128. Uh, we have some people who are getting you know, 256, 512 gigs of RAM uh, for things like Fusion, because that's one of those situations where 
more can help you as long as you're doing longer fusion comps. And sure. if you're only doing, you know, 50, 100 frames, yeah, you don't yeah, really need it. You just it. need to be able to store those frames. Exactly. It's, it's not going to actually make things run faster. It's just going to have the have the space to think about all those frames and cache them, right? Yeah. yeah. And luckily, it's just math uh, in those in those cases. So, you know, if you uh, are playing through a timeline and you realize, oh, I'm running out of RAM halfway through, mm -hmm. you know that, oh, you pretty much need twice the RAM and yeah. you're going to be fine. It's not some weird nebulous, it changes kind of depending on what yes. you're doing. It yeah. depends on the bit depth, the uh, resolution, and how many frames. Gotcha. So until Blackmagic maybe makes some tweaks to how it uses the hardware, which I'm sure they're they're probably working on and stuff, but right now it's all about the processor then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and all about the single core performance is what we typically call it. It's how fast each individual core is, not how many cores you have. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a race car, not a semi-truck. So if I were going to build a fusion system from the ground up, let me just make see if I have this right, okay? Uh, I would prioritize getting the, the fastest single core performance for my CPU. Yep. I would get a bunch of RAM, like 128 maybe, something like that, and I'd get a decent graphics card. Yep, yep, something like an RTX 4070, 4070 Ti, maybe 4080. Yeah, and that will get you going. And that's about the best you can possibly get. Wow. That's nice that it's like accessible, but it's also really <laughs> sad that you can't just like, you know, if I have $20,000, I can't just make this amazing system. It's just, yeah, the, that that's 90... where it is right now, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that $10,000 CPU from AMD, it's gonna be slower than a $500 Intel or AMD Ryzen CPU. All right, okay. So you probably just saved people a bunch of money. <laughs> like literally, you guys just saved money from what's happening here. So a um, couple of questions that I get about PCs. We've pretty much been talking about PCs here. A desktop versus a laptop. What are the differences there? When would you, I mean, obviously you need a laptop if you're going to take it somewhere, but I always thought that if you have a laptop that has the same kind of components, you know, it's, the, it's a 4090 or whatever, it's a certain kind of processor and it's comparable to the desktop version that, oh, well, I'll just get the mobile version of that. Would those be considered equal? Yeah, unfortunately, no. Uh, there's a lot of marketing games, mm -hmm. I feel like, that go on, and it's not Intel or AMD or NVIDIA, it's, it's kind of everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it, I'm not gonna point fingers at any one person because it's kind of just the nature of the industry. Um, unfortunately, you have a great example is the RTX 4090. Uh, we have the desktop version, and then there's a 4090 mobile, which is actually what we're using in, in our laptops. Very different GPU, name is the same, but a 4090 mobile is more equivalent to like a 4070 a desktop. So that's like wow. two, three steps down in wow. terms of performance. Um, and CPUs too. Um, there's the 14900K that we use in our desktop slot. There's the 14900HX that we use in our laptops. Specs wise, they look about the same. Same core count, they appear the same, very different. Um, in that case, it's more about how much power can you give the CPU? Because a mobile platform, it can't provide as much power as you know a giant cord from the wall to a giant power supply. Uh, but at the same time too, it's making a lot of heat and you gotta be able to dissipate that heat. And on a desktop, you can have big heat sinks, you can have big fans. On a laptop, you've got you know heat sinks this, this big, fans you know, yay big. Yeah. Uh, so you just can't get rid of it. So it's gotta throttle it down. And throttling is very normal these days. That's like how things are designed is to yeah. throttle. But that means that you know you don't have that thermal headroom to get more performance. So a general rule of thumb number is that a laptop at the same price as a desktop is going to be somewhere around 20% slower. Um, that's a rule of thumb. It's going to change. It can be more. It can be less. Uh, but if you on, want to rule on, a, of thumb, on something that's similarly specced, yeah, uh, similarly priced is usually how we do it. Similarly specced in terms of like names, it's going to be even more uh, oh. because they kind of play those games Gosh. about like this is the top laptop GPU, so let's use the top you know number or model name, you know the 4090. But it's really not comparable to a desktop 4090. I'm so sorry to anyone who bought a laptop right before they watched this. <laughs> <laughs> and at least the, the good part with laptops is that there is less choice in the hardware that you're gonna put into it. So you don't have something like you have on desktops where you're like, hey, do I go up to Threadripper Pro? There's no sure. Threadripper Pro on laptops. Yeah. So generally with it laptops- catch on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Would, it would not work well. Yeah. So generally with laptops, the more money you put into it, the more performance you're gonna get. Mm. So luckily, at least there, most people buy based on budget. So, mm. you know, they're at a certain budget level, that's the best they can, they can you know, reasonably afford. 
cool, that's the performance they're going to get. But yeah, trying to compare it to a desktop, somewhere between 20, probably 30% is about the performance hit you're going to take by doing a laptop. Man. That's 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 wild. And that's mostly just because you can't gr grab all the power that it needs in that little box. And even if it could, it can't cool stuff down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's just For, a physical problem. Exactly. Uh, just as a, like a reference, our desktops these days, we start off at about an 850 watt power supply in most of our systems. Uh, it's overkill sometimes, but that's kind of where we start off. Our laptops, the max laptop that you really can find is going to be about 350 watts. Wow. So already that's less than half the wattage, the half the power you have to work with. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't scale linearly how much power you have to work kind of the performance you get, but it just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how much resources a laptop has to work with compared to a desktop. Man, that's really interesting. I know you guys build PCs, but we got to ask, okay, a Mac versus a PC. Mm -hmm. What's the performance difference there? Because I know there's the 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 new like you know M1, M2, M3, and those are really impressive for the specs that you can you can see, right? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't consider getting a computer with eight gigs of RAM mm -hmm. and really being serious about I'm going to edit video on this thing these days. Um, but that's what that's what my MacBook has, and it works pretty well. So. Um, why would you get a Mac versus a PC? And what are kind of the differences there as far as uh, content creation and DaVinci Resolve? I feel like more than anywhere else, the whole Mac versus PC is where you get you know, fans of yeah. one versus the other. And you know, if you want love one versus the other, you really like Windows, you really like Mac OS, go for it. I mean, yeah. it's more important that you are comfortable with the tool you're using sure. than that you're eking out every little bit of performance. So that, yeah. that's that's number one. Uh, but in terms of raw performance, uh, especially with the new M1, M2s and stuff, um, there are some nuances uh, between PC versus Mac. Uh, some are better for other things than, you know, they just kind of trade blows in different ways. Um, number one, I would say, is that if you need to operate off of a battery, uh, you're out in the field, you can't plug in your laptop, you'd be on battery, that's where Macs excel. Uh, they are very energy efficient and they pretty much get the same performance when plugged in than when on battery. Wow. So if you need to be on battery, Mac is probably the way you wanna go, like a MacBook. The other area that they tend to be a little bit faster than PC for is for uh, processing of H.264 and HVC media. Uh, their acceleration chips are a little bit more efficient than right now than on PC side. Uh, it's not massive. It's like a 10 to 20% difference, depending on whether you're talking about versus a desktop or, or a laptop. Um, but if you're, you know, right on that edge of like, oh, I can almost play this in real time. Yeah. It'd be really nice just to be able to you know, do that. So, but again, 10% is, you know, it's the difference between 20 and 24 FPS. Sure. You know, so it's, it's not a massive thing, but there is an advantage there. Everywhere else, actually, PC tends to take a performance leap. Uh, even things like ProRes or DNX, uh, even though Macs have those accelerators, that's about a wash between the two. PCs just have more raw horsepower to throw at it. Yeah. So like even it, if it's it less can, efficient, you know, there's more. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Other things, anything that uses the GPU pr pretty much. Uh, so in DaVinci Resolve, you're talking about open effects, the AI stuff, especially the AI stuff is way faster on PC. Uh, we're talking two or three times faster. So if you're doing any of that super scaling, the magic masking, yeah. significantly faster on PC primarily because of NVIDIA with their CUDA stuff. AI, GPU effects, uh, raw footage is also quite a bit faster. Uh, so if you are, you know, you need a laptop and you want to be working like dailies on set and you're shooting raw, a PC laptop could give you a nice little performance bump there. Uh, again, you want to be plugged in, yeah. but you know, if you can be plugged in, uh, you get a nice performance bump and that's probably the way to go. Um, Fusion is probably the last area there. Uh, it's a lot closer than I think a lot of people think. Um, PC has a slight uh, performance lead there, but it's something like 10 or 15%. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it's not- It's mostly on the processor anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not, most of the time, it's nothing that's game breaking. Mm -hmm. it, it's close, you know, little trade-offs here or there. Um, so a lot of the time it actually comes down more to what else are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, are you also working with After Effects or Premiere Pro or uh, do you need to be working with a bunch of different uh, types of external drives? So you want Windows so that you can do NTFS, you know, without sure. having to do yeah. third party utilities or uh, are you doing DIT work? So you want to use Mac for, you know, the software that's out there for DIT work. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it comes down to that, yeah. you know, just where else does it fit into your workflow?
That makes sense. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, for absolutely. I mean, that. that's that's the big thing, you know, oftentimes that we're trying to do is find those truths and share them because, you know, even for our own customers, mm -hmm. we would rather our customers spend a little bit less money, get exactly what they need, be happy with it. And then, man, they become lifetime customers. They become fans. You yeah. know? And like, and it's just way better for us, for our souls. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. that they're getting the right thing, not just the most expensive thing. Yeah. All right. So if somebody wants to talk to you about um, about building a system and mm -hmm. maybe they want a system from Puget, right? What do, what do they do? Uh, so PugetSystems.com is definitely the place to start. I mean, we've got configuration pages there. Um, if you actually are interested in purchasing a system, obviously we always recommend uh, pick up the phone, talk. Um, there's so much, so much you can get over a phone call conversation that's way better than e giant email threads. Yeah. Um, so that's the big thing is talk to our consultants. Uh, but even if you're not gonna be buying a system from us, uh, one of the unique things we do is all of the research and testing and benchmarks we do, those go on our website, not behind any sort of registration or paywall. So you can go to our, our website, uh, I believe there's like articles and you can go to our hardware articles and you can check out, you know, the testing we did for the latest NVIDIA super cards or the 1400 KS that Intel just launched yeah. a few days ago. Um, so you can check all that out and see, is this worth it for what I'm doing? Yeah. And then you can make the decision, you know, if you're going to be building your system, you know, yourself, where do I spend that money? Is it worth it to make this upgrade versus that upgrade? Yeah, that's that's been such a valuable resource for us over the years. And um, the Puget systems that we have are, are amazing. We love them. They, they're, they're our best computers. And so, uh, yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Puget Systems, make sure to do that. Um, this is why we're up here talking with these guys is because, I mean, you could see you've tested all these different scenarios and all these different ways of creating, uh, creating content in Resolve with all this hardware that nobody else gets to do that. I mean, they have these huge test benches where they just go through and, and and just actually put the rubber to the road and make sure like, okay, if you get this card, you get this kind of performance and this versus this other this other solution. So wildly valuable. So yeah. thank you guys so much for, no for what you do and how you're helping our industry. I really appreciate it. Of course, of course. I mean, is we're in a very unique situation, I would say. We have the hardware contacts so we can get CPUs and GPUs, and we can do all that. Um, we have the people we're talking to, the customers who were telling us of their headaches, because mm -hmm. that's what we want to know. Where is your headache? So uh, let's solve that headache. So we get to constantly hear what's the problems. Yeah. And so we can take both of those and put them together. We have the resources from both sides, and we're not beholden to Intel or AMD. You know, we're not having to only sell those products. We have freedom to do whatever we want. Yeah. Which means we have the freedom to find out what's the actual right thing. See, I love that. I love that. That's value first. So make sure to check out Puget Systems at PugetSystems.com. And uh, yeah, get yourself a, a just a smoking PC, man. This is this is so cool. I know I'm definitely going to be checking my specs on my PC and making sure that I have everything um, because, man, this has been very, very enlightening. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Wasn't that amazing? I freaking love Matt. I love these guys. They've been so good to us over the years. They've been a sponsor of ResolveCon and they've helped us out with a lot of workflow stuff. They're just amazing. So if you're looking for just a top-notch PC, cannot recommend Puget Systems enough. And even if you're not into buying one from them, I would take this wisdom and go crazy and build your own. If this video was helpful, please let me know in the comments. We're trying to make some of the most hard-hitting, amazing content for you guys. It's just super valuable. So let us know what you thought down below. And just a little reminder, if you're getting into Resolve, make sure to check out this video. It's a full introduction to Resolve course, totally free on YouTube. There it is. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you have a great, a great, I don't know when this video is going to come out, but next few days, I was going to say weekend, but I don't know. Whenever you watch this, I hope the next few days, like two to three days is really good for you. <laughs>